I just love the explosion attack that you can do with the switch axe. It just looks so cool. Or maybe I just love explosions. Anyways, five tips for the switch axe. Where the fifth tip is about skills that I would recommend to use along with this weapon. Hey guys, my name is Short Devil and I do stream on Twitch. Link is down in the description box below where you can talk to me live and see whatever dumb things that I get up to. And I guess we do chill every now and then, so make sure to tune in there. And also, my Twitter is down there as well in the bo description box below where you can see any other channel updates. So make sure to check me out there. Now before we can start off this whole video, I want to say that this video is catered towards the new players of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. So if you're an advanced or veteran player that are out there watching this video, you don't need to watch this. I'm pretty sure you know what you're doing with this weapon. But it would be great if you could leave in the comments down below maybe some additional tips that I may have missed. The first tip for you Switch Axe users is to make use of the sword mode. The sword mode is your main damage dealer with this weapon. Now it doesn't mean that the axe mode is completely useless. The purpose of the axe mode is to poke the monster every now and then and eventually make the monster trip up so that you can make full use of the sword mode. Now back to the sword mode, be sure to keep an eye on the meter to know when to switch back to axe mode. If you switch back to axe mode manually, you will get some energy returned to the bar. Whereas if you were to automatically let the sword switch to the axe mode, you will not get any energy returned. That's why it's best to manually trigger the switch back to axe mode. Additionally, you don't want to be in the sword mode for a long time while the monster is active. This is because the sword mode's mobility is comparable to the greatsword with how hard it is to move around with. That's why it's best to stick close to the monster when attacking in sword mode. Make sure that you're always making the hits on the monster rather than just swinging about and not hitting the monster at all. The second tip is to change forms while attacking. You don't want to be standing still while changing either into sword mode or axe mode. You want to keep moving. Because if you're standing still while switching to either mode, you're basically wide open to an attack. So it's best that you keep on moving. You're also missing an opportunity to do damage while switching modes. So the best example for this is actually doing it through the wild swing attack. By doing it through the wild swing attack, you can deal a lot of damage in this single attack. However, this attack has a long animation. So if you want to do this attack, it is best that you do it while the monster is down. Another good way of changing forms while attacking is to do it by rolling forward. This is a great move for closing the distance between the monster or actually getting out of the way of their attack. Especially with how I've said before that the sword mode's mobility is quite low and you would want to change forms without getting hit. Therefore this option is just perfect for that instance. The third tip is to build up the amp state. Now that's when your little sword icon glows. To do this, you need to inflict damage to the monster while in sword mode. Now while you're in sword mode, the best way to actually build up the gauge is to actually hit the circle buttons twice or again if you're on Xbox, press the B buttons twice. By doing this, you will perform the double slash and the heavenward flurry attacks. But again, these two moves are a bit heavy on the terms of animation so be a bit careful on whenever you want to use this. Now once you reach the amp state, your sword will allow you to do file damage which is dependent on which file type that your switch axe uses. If the file is of a power element type, it will inflict elemental damage to the monster. The power file type will do more raw damage. The dragon file will add additional dragon damage. Any type of status effect file, so whether it's poison or paralysis, it will obviously add more build up to that status effect. The exhaust file will basically make the monster tired and if this file is used on the head of the monster, it will eventually knock it out. Another thing to take note of is that the amp state allows you to do more damage than you normally would. The fourth tip is this weapon's strongest attack, which is called the Zero Sum Discharge. Now obviously you need to have your sword in the amp state for you to do this attack. By pressing the triangle and circle buttons or Y and B buttons, you jump onto the monster, jab the sword into it, and discharge your file on the monster. You also have to spam the triangle or Y buttons 
to keep Dean in damage and eventually blow the monster up with the file, which looks really cool. The bad thing about this attack is that the monster can throw you off if it's in the middle of an attack, so use this attack wisely. You can also like stop midway of spamming your wire and triangle buttons just so you can let the explosion off earlier rather than later. Now make sure to remember that you're discharging your file into the monster. So again, depending on what file type you're using, the switch axe will inflict that file onto the monster. And here we are with the fifth tip, which is skills that I would recommend using. Now I'm not trying to say once again that you definitely need to have these on for you to use this weapon. I'm just saying, take a look at it, it might help out. Health boost is one of them skills that it could help out because especially with the amount of times that you mess up while you're doing an attack and the monster hits you, then hey, you got health boost on, there's an additional amount of health remaining, even though you've taken that hit. The power prolonger skill allows your switch axe to stay powered up for much longer than it should be. So once you've reached the amp sword state, it will stay on for much longer than you normally would if you have this skill on. The evade extender skill obviously increases your evade distance so this is really helpful for your little hop that you do with this weapon because when you've done an attack with the switch axe you normally do a little hop rather than a, a full-on roll so this will help increase that little hop distance to much greater if you really want to get out of the monster's attack maximum might could also help out because whenever you're using the attacks with this weapon you don't use your stamina at all, but with the amount of times that you do dodge with this weapon, you do use your stamina quite a lot. So this is a bit 50-50, you might want to go for this, but it really depends on how you play. And that's all I have for the Switch Axe. The Switch Axe feels like a glass cannon at times. There's times where you, re where you really feel powerful with the sword mode, but other times it just feels like you're just getting hit a lot. You just really need to be careful with your moves with the switch axe. Now I hope you guys found this video useful in some way. Give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more helpful videos. And also if you haven't already, follow me on my Twitch. Link is down in the description box below where you can talk to me live and see any other dumb things that go on there. So be sure to tune in there. And finally, my Twitter is also there, link in the description box below where you can see any other channel updates. Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. Yeah, it should be up. Yeah, I was trying to get out. It should be up. <laughs> he killed five of us.